What's up, everybody, and welcome to Post Hype. Today, we're going to be talking about how Disney Plus is jacking up their subscription service prices for the very first time, as well as some controversial changes that will be happening to The Witcher in Season 4. And later on in the video, it's all things DC, and we'll be talking about how Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn might be in a relationship in one of the films coming up soon, as well as some Ezra Miller Flash movie-related news. If you guys enjoy any of these topics, make sure to smash that like button, but let's not waste another second, and let's start with The Witcher. Now, as you guys probably heard a few days ago, maybe about a week or so, it was announced that Liam Hemsworth is going to be taking over as Geralt of Rivia. Now, to me, that's just absolutely crazy because if you guys know anything about Henry Cavill, you know he is passionate about The Witcher. He's read the books, he's played the games, and he is just so involved and invested in that character that when this news came out, it was absolutely shocking to me. You guys can let us know down in the comments below how you felt, but we are going to go over this article right here from GameSpot.com. Now, it does go on to say, fans of Netflix's The Witcher TV series were surprised earlier this fall when the show was renewed for season four. However, that wasn't the surprising part. It was surprising that Henry Cavill was announced to be putting down the sword of Geralt of Rivia with Liam Hemsworth being brought on to assume the role. Now, nothing against Liam Hemsworth, but like I said earlier, it's just so weird being that one, not only does Henry Cavill seem to look the part, but he plays the part so well. He is definitely the main draw of that show. And I mean, besides Yennefer, who I think is also just such a great addition to the cast and everything, he was really the main draw. And so I think that's why it's so astonishing for fans to see this change. I mean, if Liam Hemsworth came on maybe as a different Witcher character and they just went ahead and kind of transitioned off of Geralt, I think that would maybe be a better decision to make because as it stands, him just taking over and being recast seems like a recipe for disaster. Now, the article does go on to say even further. In the days that followed, the Witcher's fan base expressed their shock and dismay that Cavill was walking away from the one of his dream roles. They even organized a change.org petition that has over 275,000 signatures calling on Netflix to try and persuade Cavill to stay. Cavill's mind has been made up, however. Now, we do get to see a little bit in the mind of Henry Cavill. He does go on to say, My journey as Geralt of Rivia has been filled with both monsters and adventures. And alas, I will be laying down my medallion and my swords for season four. Cavill said, In my stead, the fantastic Mr. Liam Hemsworth will be taking up the mantle of the White Wolf. Executive producer and showrunner Lauren Hisrich hopes that the change will bring a new energy to the Netflix series. Now, I hope it brings a new change too, because honestly, I love season one and I think the elements that they played with as far as like the timing of the show and how you never knew exactly what was happening when, that was one of my favorite aspects and I think the creativity behind that really stood out to me and made The Witcher stand out as a Netflix show. However, season two, although they upped the production value, it seemed like the writing and the characters kind of took a back seat to the monster fights and the new production value like I was talking about. Now, that's unfortunate for me because I did love season one and although season two I thought took a step back it wasn't bad by any means however if season three comes out and it doesn't absolutely blow audiences away I'm super afraid for what that means for the future of season four with Liam Hemsworth. That just seems like a recipe for disaster, like I said. Now, Hiswich does go on to add, I will say, please come back for The Witcher season three so that we can continue to do this. Now, that's what I was just kind of saying right there. It seems like they're really already setting themselves up for failure because if the hype for The Witcher doesn't continue throughout season three, and it already probably has diminished somewhat by this casting change announcement, I think the future of The Witcher might be a little bit bleaker than we think, but you guys let us know down in the comments below. Are you still excited for The Witcher Season 3 and even more so Season 4 with Liam Hemsworth? We'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on the matter. However, we're going to move on to our next topic for the day, which is going to be how Disney Plus is getting its very first price hike. Now, that's super unfortunate to me. I just actually canceled my Disney Plus subscription and jumped onto my mom's because it just didn't seem worth it anymore. I mean, the value I get out of it is maybe watching the Star Wars and Marvel shows. I don't really go back to watch like Bambi and Cinderella in those classic films. And although I do love the new movies like Moana and that sort of thing, they don't draw me in for more than $8 a month. So we're going to go on to look at this article from GameSpot.com. This one goes on to say, Disney is implementing the first price increase for 
for its streaming service, Disney Plus, this week. The price hike was announced months ago, but it's finally happening on December 8th alongside the launch of a new ad-based subscription tier. Now, I don't know about you guys, but one thing I hate about these new streaming services is these new ad-based subscription launches. It just seems so backwards. I mean, the thing I love about streaming services and the reason that we got rid of cable television or not got rid of, but moved away from is to get rid of the ads. I mean, nobody wants to watch 40 minutes of programming and 20 minutes of ads. If I can just pay directly to get the contact that I want, that's what I'm going to do. And that's the reason I love YouTube so much is because I can get that YouTube premium and just get endless and endless content. I have no problem paying $8, $10, $15, maybe $20 a month if I'm getting the value out of your service. However, for me, and I don't know how you guys feel about this, you can let us know in the comments. I don't think Disney Plus is really worth this price hike. But they will go on to say, on December 8th, Disney will raise the rates to $11 a month or $110 per year if you lock in for the entire 12 months. The current Disney Plus price is $8. Now, that $3 increase is just crazy to me. I mean, yeah, they're gonna see a substantial growth in revenue because of that, and I don't know how many customers they'll actually lose. It might be a good uh, business decision at the end of the day, but for me personally, it's just not worth it anymore. Beginning December 8th, Disney Plus will be divided into two main membership choices. These will include Disney Plus Basic, which is $8 a month with ads, and Disney Plus Premium, $11 a month, or $110 a year with no ads. So they are gonna keep that $8 subscription service. However, now ads are gonna be included. And I think that's the number one rule of the internet in general. I've heard MKBHD Marquez Brownlee say this, you don't give somebody something on the internet and then take it away unless you're expecting terrible results. Now, this might be a little bit different because it is Disney and they own so much. And I think that actually goes into play a little bit further in the article about why they're making this decision. Not because they don't wanna lose people on Disney Plus, but because they're trying to wrap people into all the other subscription services that they own as well. If we go a little bit further, it says Disney, it says Disney will sell a Disney Bundle Duo basic option, which that is just a mouthful in its own. But that option is gonna be $10 a month that includes Disney Plus with ads and Hulu with ads. Now, another bundle that Disney is gonna offer is the Disney Bundle Trio basic. These names are crazy. This is as bad as Microsoft's naming right here, but that one is going to be $13 a month. And that will include Disney plus with ads, Hulu with ads and ESPN with ads. So they're going to wrap you into Disney, Hulu and ESPN all with ads. However, for $13 a month, that's a little crazy for me. There will also be the Disney bundle trio premium, which is $20 a month. And that comes with Disney plus with no ads, Hulu with no ads and ESPN with ads. Now, if you ask me, if I'm paying $20 a month for anything, I better be getting zero ads, zilch ads, not a single ad in sight. I don't want to see Colgate on my screen if I'm paying $20 a month for something. Now, I think, like I said before, the reason that they are doing this price increase is because they want everybody to get in to Hulu, ESPN, and Disney Plus. This isn't about Disney Plus per se, it's about Disney being able to grab their entire audience and make them subscribe to all of their subscription services in one whole swoop. I think that's really what's happening behind the scenes here. They're looking to get more bang for their buck and they want everybody to be subscribed to both Hulu and ESPN as well as Disney Plus. Now, I think this is just getting into monopoly territory here where Disney owns so much content and so many different properties at this point that they can kind of force you to pay these prices because I mean, Hulu is one of the top subscription services. Disney's one of the top subscription services and we all love ESPN for our sports. So I mean, how could they not make people pay these higher prices when they're gonna inevitably wanna watch these services anyway. I think it's time for Disney to have a little bit less control over the industry in my opinion, but you guys let us know what you think down in the comments below. Are these price changes not that drastic and are you willing to pay it? We'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. However, we're gonna get into our DC news for the video and that is gonna be talking about the Flash movie coming out. Now, unfortunately, once again, the Flash movie has had a change in release date. However, it hasn't been pushed back this time it's actually been moved forward and it's funny enough the reason that they did that now from this article at ign it goes on to say warner bros discovery has pushed forward the release date for the flash the studio announced that the flash will now premiere in theaters on june 16th a week earlier than its previously announced june 23rd release date 
This is likely to avoid Indiana Jones in the Dial of Destiny, which we just reacted to if you guys want to watch that one. But I think that's just hilarious that the little bit of faith that they have in the Flash movie is just gone. I mean, it's evaporated completely. They do not believe in this movie, in my opinion. They've changed the release date so many times. They've changed directors so many times. They've changed the script so many times. I mean, at this point, they're doing anything and everything they can to just make this somewhat of a success. I mean, if it even breaks even, I'd be surprised. However, with James Gunn as the head of DC at the moment, I'm a little bit confused. I mean, obviously they don't just want to can this, but I'm wondering if they have like strategically positioned this movie to restart the entire DCU. And now that they're going to be going in a new direction, maybe this will be kind of a liftoff point for that new direction to take place. Now it does go on to say the flash has had a dog time getting to the movie theaters from multiple director searches, delays, and star Ezra Miller's legal controversies, including arrests and the announcement that they will seek help for mental health issues. It's just been a hell of a time for this movie. I mean, literally, they almost got canceled because of Ezra Miller's behavior. And I don't know what's going on with him. I don't know Ezra Miller personally, and neither does anybody watching this video probably. But from an outside perspective, this man just seems completely off of his rocker. And that does not entice me to see this movie. It's the exact opposite effect that a star like The Rock or Tom Cruise has on their films. They seem like cool guys. They seem like they're so passionate about their films in the movie making process that I'd want to go to the theater just to see what they're doing. However, it's the opposite for someone like Ezra Miller, who seems like they couldn't give a crap about the fans, the crap about the process and the movies that they're in, and they'd rather just be doing some nonsense. So I don't know how you guys feel. You can let us know in the comments below, but are you still even excited for the Flash movie? Are you gonna go out of your way to see it? Or when HBO Max finally turns into Max or whatever it is, are you guys just gonna wait to watch it on streaming? Now we do have another story here from DC. This one includes Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn, as well as her interest in being in love with Poison Ivy. Now, we do have an article here from comicbook.com. This one goes on to say, DC fans have been treated to Margot Robbie's performance as Harley Quinn in DC Suicide Squad, Birds of Prey, and The Suicide Squad. While it's currently unclear if Robbie will ever play Harley again, the star has said that she wants to return to the role. If Robbie does play the iconic character in the future, many fans are hoping that she will enter a romance with Poison Ivy, much like in the comics and Harley Quinn in the animated series. Now, to me, that just sounds like a whole lot of fun. We're also going to be getting Lady Gaga taking on the role of Harley Quinn in Joker Folia Do. So it looks like 2023 might just be the year of Harley Quinn after all. And I mean, she was absolutely fantastic in The Suicide Squad. That movie was excellent. And I love how big of a role she actually played in it. However, Ever. seeing her on screen with Poison Ivy, who I don't think we've seen in a live action movie since the 80s or 90s at this point, it would be super cool to see them together and to portray that relationship that they had in the comics and the animated series. Now, Margot Robbie actually went on to say, I have been pushing for that idea for years. I cannot tell you how hard I've been pushing for that. Honestly, when I pictured it, I always pictured like Poison Ivy in the comics. I don't really actually picture an actress doing it, but I agree that would be so good. So it's cool to see that Margot Robbie would at least be on board and that the fans are kind of foaming at the mouth for this type of interaction. It'd be so cool to see Harley and Poison Ivy on screen together, but you guys let us know down in the comments below. Do you think this is something that might actually come to fruition, or is this just a fever dream that all the fans can keep dreaming of for the time being? That's where we're going to wrap this one up here, guys. If you have anything you want to say about any of the stories we covered today, let us know down in the comments below. We read every single one, and we always love to engage with you. If you guys liked the video, make sure to smash that like button, and if you didn't, let us know where we can improve. We are always open to your feedback and suggestions. That being said, as always, it's been MJ with Post Hype. We hope you guys have a great day. Peace out.